Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. And Terrence. What's up? All right, guys. We are back. Um, there is plenty to talk about, so let's get right into it. Um, Terrence, you watched a really <laughs> stupid movie. Tell us all about it. Oh, uh, yeah. I watched Godzilla X Kong last week. Um, these movies, I don't know if you've seen the first. Uh, have you guys seen any of the other ones? Yes, because the Godzilla, Godzilla King of Monsters, and then uh, Kong Skull Island, and Godzilla versus Kong, and now this one. I saw, I saw uh, the two right before this one, the Kong movie, okay. uh, and the and the the versus movie. I saw Godzilla. Okay. I saw Skull Island halfway, and I turned it off because I was saving my <laughs> brain. And then I watched Monarch, which was better than all of it. Monarch is very good. <laughs> Yo, Monarch has no reason to be as good as it is. It's fucking the Monarch best. Monarch is, is the best um, out of this, this entire MonsterVerse. This is the, yeah. It's the best thing that they put out of, out of this entire MonsterVerse thing. Maybe next to King, Godzilla King of Monsters is pretty good. Godzilla versus Kong. You just watch it for the fights. And then this one is, is very similar. You watch it for the fights. Um, this takes place mostly in the... Upside down. I don't know what they call the underworld where the the, the Titans are, live. Uh, God, yeah. uh, King Kong is just kind of like after he got his ass kicked by Godzilla in the last movie, they actually ended up beating Mecha Godzilla. He's in the underworld just doing his Kong thing, and he he ends up meeting meeting up with a whole bunch of his other kind because he thinks he's the last one left. He meets up with his uh, with his own kind. He finds them, but there's this guy named the Scar King that is uh, controlling them. By, uh, he has control of a ice titan. I don't remember the name of it. Doesn't even matter unless you're really into this stuff. Uh, and he's got to get he's got to get Godzilla to help him take this thing down, take the Scar King down. Um, shenanigans ensue. Uh, some and some there's some human shit that no one gives a fuck about. Um, and they end up killing about a hundred thousand people in uh, South America by the end of the by the end of the movie. Because the final fight takes place in, I don't know where it takes place. I wasn't really paying that much attention. Rio de Janeiro. It takes place in South America on a beach somewhere. And Rio they de kill Janeiro. a bunch of people. Rio de Janeiro, yes. Um, they just demolish that city. They just completely destroy it. People were complaining about, uh, remember in, in Man of Steel, they were complaining about the Metropolis getting demolished. This is like 10 times worse. Oh, great. <laughs> they just destroyed everything. They, they, they're, they're fucking titans. So they just destroy everything. They don't give a fuck. They killed a lot of people, and wow. the sequence wasn't even that great. I'm like, it's fun, I guess, if you're a 12 year old, but yeah. And this, I had I, I watched Godzilla uh, minus one like two weeks ago or um, a couple weeks ago. That movie is vastly superior to this. So after one, after watching Godzilla minus one, and then this, I'm like, I don't need any more of these movies. It's not for me. It's not for me. But if you go into the movie theater to watch them, I guess you'd have fun with your, your kids. They get, get to see Kaiju just beat the shot at each other. Overall, it's really dumb. Most of it takes place in the underworld or the under under upside down world. So everything is like relative to the size. Like I told you guys offline, everything is relative to Kong's size. So he's like really not big considering where he lives. Everything is the same size as him. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, well, what the fuck is the point? This is stupid. This movie's dumb. Don't bother. Unless you just want to turn your brain off, literally just to scoop your brain out of your fucking skull and throw it in the trash for two hours. <laughs> You'll have fun. You'll have fun. Um, I don't recommend it, honestly. I didn't really like no it. No shit. Um, <laughs> kind of, I don't know. I like the last one better, honestly. It was fun. So, it was, I, th- I thought the last one was more fun, and it looked, I think it looked better. There's so much CG in this one. When he's in like the upside down world, it looks like CG. Like the best CG is the CG that doesn't look like it's CG, and right. this looked like CG yeah. throughout the entirety of the movie until the until the last sequence. Then they look kind of real, but overall, eh, no. I, I mean the the scene in the trailer with Kong and Godzilla running in the I mm-hmm. guess the underground or whatever looks so bad to me in the trailer. I was immediately turned off to it. I was like, all right, uh, I'm I'm done. I I think this series is horrendous. I really don't think it's very. <laughs> um, it's not. It's getting just just getting progressively dumber, and Godzilla is basically overpowered. Every time he kills another another Titan, he gets stronger. Like he's, he's got purple atomic breath, and also the other thing, the atomic breath that he just kind of throws out all willy nilly in this movie. He just does it just because at this point. 
Like in, I don't, did, have you watched uh, Minus One yet? Either I, one? I've only seen, I've only seen part of it. I watched the beginning. It, I his it. his Atomic Breath in Minus One is an atomic bomb. Yeah, just, like that's, that's what the whole cool point story. of Godzilla. Right. Like that Godzilla is yeah. a big ass metaphor for what yeah, uh, the West did to Japan. Message. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So when in minus one, when he lets that motherfucker, when he lets that shit sing, it's an atomic bomb. It just blows up right. everything in its path. <laughs> this is just a laser. I'm like, all right, the fuck is this? Yeah. So again, going from minus one to this, I'm like, yo, this, this nigga sucks, yo. <laughs> like I didn't. Hey, I think I they. I think they've. Movie. I think they've lost the thread on this franchise. Yeah, now he's just a. And he's just like, hey, I'm gonna wake up and just beat all the other monsters and go back to sleep. Like there's a one part he sleeps in like the. Um, he sleeps in the Colosseum in in Rome because he's tired after fighting another monster like a spider monster. I'm like, all right, man, it's not for me anymore. That's all. Again, I'm just I watch just, Monarch. Just watch Monarch. It, it's yeah, so Monarch hard. is just. Better than it had any, like you said, had better than it had any right to be. Um, and I think Monarch leads up to Kong Skull. Like the end of Monarch for this season is leading up to Skull Island. Yeah, I, I believe know. so. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Monarch is better than these movies. Well, no, because oh. Monarch Monarch is a slightly weird, right? Because it deals in like two timelines. Um, right, right. So I think it because. Uh, I think it actually leads to not Skull Island, but um, what was the la- what was the one right before this? Godzilla versus Kong. I, I think that's where it leads. Because this one, that one takes place right after. They they minus one is like takes place in forty six, but uh, I think in Monarchy it takes place like right after Godzilla attacks San Francisco, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he but, attacks San Francisco and they're trying to like rebuild. And it's like yeah. right after it, right? And then all this other crazy shit happens. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't. I, I, the timeline is weird. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I I think Monarch starts like you said right after the first Godzilla movie, like in this series, right? The one that's yeah. like kind of boring, but yeah, with Brian a, Yeah, the one. Yeah, he doesn't but show it's up like confident. Like right, but it's actually a competently made movie and not just fucking stupid. Um, yeah. So it starts a little after that because they're like, oh, here's all the Godzilla like warning systems and everything else in Japan. Um, and then that whole story goes to that season. And then at the end of that season, spoiler for Monarch, when they come back out of the sort of underground, they're like whisked away and they're like, we're at this, you know, this facility basically tracking Kong. So I, I think that's where Kong comes in. And I assume yeah, they, they come back season. out of the underground into the future because what's her name right. is like a big shit at this. Point. Yeah, okay, I now remember. <clears throat> okay. So it's it's in between those two movies, and again, if you just wipe this series away and just did that fir- put that first uh, Godzilla movie Monarch, and then I guess, uh, frankly, I would redo Skull Island. That's just me. But then do Skull Island. And then move forward with brand new movies. I with the team that's doing Monarch, I think you could make a lot better stuff. This is just devolved into the Fast and the Furious version of this universe. Yes, it's just, it's just exactly loud and dumb. Where again, you don't necessarily have to make it hyper serious, but somehow Monarch was able to have this like really smart, intelligent story. It it, it goes against the idea of like. Nobody cares about the humans, but like you do care about the humans in the human story in Monarch, it actually is what makes the series rich, right? Like that these people yeah. they thought were dead were like in the past in this underground, trapped in time and all this other shit. It actually makes for a really interesting um, bit of storytelling. So, but the, the movies are fucking garbage. <laughs> They're just garbage. So, cool. Great. Uh, I I assume you let's, also uh, let's Boy let's Girl keep Girl? the garbage train. Let's keep the garbage. <laughs> train. That wasn't me. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> um, everything that you said in the first part of your review applies for Boy Kills World, mm-hmm. um, including the whole. Um, uh, I kind of dozed off a bit. Um, <laughs> this isn't. This is not a good movie. Boy Kills World. And I wasn't expecting it to be right. I just wanted there to. I just wanted like a dumb action movie, and what I got was a dumb movie. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was just it was just a dumb movie. Um, you know, rule of action movies like show me something I haven't seen before. I haven't seen in a very long time. And uh, there was one fight with uh, a cheese grater uh, used as a weapon. Right, cool, uh, Thanks. That sounds <laughs> yeah, that was that was actually pretty dope. That was actually pretty oh, dope. Okay. Um, but uh, everything else about this movie, this is uh, from a first time director, uh, a German fellow uh, who is uh, not as good as the German fellow that we're going to talk about with the next movie. Um, but yeah, this movie's this movie's kind of dumb, yo. Um, it's about this dystopian future where this uh where this woman who is like the chancellor or whatever played by Fonka Jansen is um uh every year on the same day she goes and they have what is called the culling uh where she uh finds 12 people and just kills them on uh on live tv wow why? Because <laughs> she don't like them. Because she don't like them. That's why. Because she don't like them. And um, at the beginning of the movie, okay. you find out that uh, you know some of the people that she killed were relatives, the family of the main character, whose name is Boy, um, who is deaf and mute. Uh, so his. So you hear a lot of his inner monologue, and his inner monologue is voiced by H. John Benjamin. Uh, of Archer fame. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's a lot of jokes that just kind of fall flat. Um, This movie feels very 2000s-ish. And the effects, like, like you go have an action movie with like a lot of blood, like that blood has to look real. And it doesn't. It looks like After Effects. It really, really does. Wow. And, and like where it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm shooting somebody with a machine gun and just like splats of blood that like don't look like it needs. It's in the same scene. You know what I mean? Um, you could see the layers that are on the fucking image. Right. And there's one there's one kill where someone gets um the the opposite end of a hatchet stuck into their forehead and i swear to god yo you could see you could see the wound moving <laughs> from the fucking hatchet like the shit is moving because the person who got the thing jammed into their head is still kind of like half alive and still breathing but they're like breathing like like they're like like an idle animation in a fucking video game, and the fucking thing, the wound and the axe are moving. It's like, all right, yo, like this is this is fucking dumb. Um, super the wound onto the screen, and it just yeah, a static wound, but the head was moving. <laughs> yeah, yo, like what the fuck? Oh, like this is this I'm is good. not this I'm is not a good movie. I don't recommend it. Um, I'm. I'm I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a COVID movie. Uh, Bill Skarsgård is in it. Um, Famke Jensen, uh, Sholto Copley. Those are the those are the big names. Um, everyone else, uh, you know, they got a they got a, a South Asian man with a receding hairline and a ponytail. So you know he's a fucking badass. Um, <laughs> but and then it it has it has the most predictable like twist if you've ever seen a movie before this is not uh this is not good don't waste your time what did you say terrence if you want to scoop your brain out of your head <laughs> like yeah, if you want to scoop your brain out of your head and and flush it down the toilet then um then you might be interested in this movie otherwise uh, you know hard pass hard pass. um is the is the twist i'm just guessing is the twist that it turns into a good movie at some point? Oh, certainly not. <laughs> certainly okay. not. All right. Well, then I'm out. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> now, I did, look, this trailer looked – this trailer, as I said when we when we talked about it, this movie seems like don't worry about the writing. Just worry about the violence because we yeah. didn't worry about the writing either. <laughs> like that's, that's Which, the impression I got. And like 
Look, I get it. Hyperviolence is a really cool thing when you're like 12. We were all 12 at one point. Or you have the mind of a 12-year-old. And that's really awesome. But I'm going to need dialogue and storytelling that is at least somewhat decent so that I have a level of interest. Look, I don't mind. I can just watch the movie in clips on YouTube. I don't need to I don't need to sit and watch a movie for an hour and a half like that. I don't mind hyperviolence. I don't mind like like yeah, I really like that movie. I really like that movie Nobody with uh yeah, with, that was uh, good. That was a good yeah, movie. with Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. With Bob Odenkirk. I really like that movie. I, I I like those John Wick movies. Those John Wick movies don't have story, like they don't. And when they tried, we got John Wick two. So it, it, it right. So, it, but I I don't necessarily need story. But if you're gonna be light on story, you better be great. You better be phenomenal on action. Yeah, and this that's just true. isn't. That's true. This this just isn't it. It's not. Um, it's. It, the the choreography and camera placement and you know there's a lot of shaky cam and you know poor it. angles like monkey man is a much better like action like like hyper violent action movie and it has a, a you know a decent enough story to get you from point a to point b mm-hmm. this is just this is a video game movie in the worst possible yeah. way where you have a main character, I, the, even the voice, he's like, oh, "Well, I, 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 I adopted the inner monologue voice of the last voice I heard, which was the an announcer on a fighting game." Uh, like they, like they, they are telling Fuck you that off. this is, Fuck they are off. telling you that this is a video game, <laughs> complete with levels and fodder and bosses that you have to kill right Don't fuck up. but this is this is just the worst part of it especially when like there are actual video game properties with actual storytelling trying to be fucking movies and prestige television right. and then you then we get this shit fuck out of here man yeah i'm good this was I'm, dumb i'm good this is the, this is the worst sequel to boy meets world i've ever heard of um <laughs> Movie made three million dollars at the box office. How much did it cost? Who cares? <laughs> I, I, I hope it. You know, frankly, I hope it costs more. <laughs> I do. I do. Let this be a lesson. Stop making garbage. Um, yeah, it just looked bad. Um, all right. Finally, it is only taking you how many years? Um, you finally watched Mad Max Fury Road. What did you think, Micah? So I got to tell you. Um, when the movie first came on, uh, you know, I'm not into uh, post-apocalyptic wasteland type stuff. Like, it's just not, it's just not my thing. It's not my type of science fiction. I, it's, it's too dirty. It's too white. It's too <laughs> fucking, like, it's not, it's not for me. I get that. Um, and, and I was, and I, I turned that movie on and, and I, 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 Fucking cross my arms. I'm like, all right, movie, impress me, right? Oh, that, that's impress always a good me. way to start a movie. Yeah, <laughs> impress me, right? I don't review movies for a living, right? I I ain't got to be unbiased at all. I'm biased as fuck, right? <laughs> impress me, movie. And I'm and and you know the movie's starting, and I'm like, all right, but uh, you know all this fucking desert and dirty ass, and you know and and and. And then I kept watching it, and I'm like, all right, that was kind of cool. All right. All right. That was pretty dope. That was pretty dope. It was like, oh, shit. Like, this movie's a secret feminist movie. Oh, wow. Like, that's cool. Like, and like, damn. Oh. Oh, shit. Really? Damn. Like, this movie won me over. <laughs> like, this movie won me over, and I was ready. I was ready to just be a fucking contrarian. Right, like, oh, everybody loves this fucking movie. This dumbass Mad Max, Master Blaster goes to Border Town, or some fucking <laughs> dumb shit. Right, I was ready to hate it, and I couldn't. I really enjoyed it. It made me wish I had seen this in a theater. Uh, That's a. It was a yeah, fun nine theater. Nine years ago, that was a fun <laughs> theater. <laughs> yeah, theater. <laughs> now, now you would be. I, I don't know if you know this. You would. Um, I think I would be remiss if I did not mention. Um, the other movies that George Miller has directed. Um, movies such as Lorenzo's Oil. I don't know if you've ever seen that. He also directed uh, The Witches of Eastwick and Happy Feet. 
He produced yeah, Babe, that. and then he directed Babe, Pig in the City, <laughs> you know, and Mad Max. <laughs> like, George Miller will do anything. He doesn't give a fuck. Like, that dude just likes making films. Um, didn't he create Mad Max? Like, did, yes. didn't, didn't he? Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so yeah, uh, man. Yeah, that's it. That's I, it. I recommend you go see it. <laughs> Take it yeah. from me. Very good. Take it from I got me. my finger on the pulse. <laughs> Nine years later. <laughs> um, yeah, look, it's – I'm actually – I haven't had a chance to see Furiosa yet. Um but I, I really, really want to. I want. I heard that Hemsworth is really good in it, so I, I'm looking forward to that a lot. So. Yeah, that's the only reason I watch this because I'm like, all right, I need, I want to go to the movies. Well, you know, but I don't, um, uh, you know, I want something to watch, and and uh, Mad Max is the or Furiosa is the next thing, the next big thing. Let me let me watch the first movie so I don't get. So I, so I don't get lost in the plot, right? Right. Um, yeah, it's amazing that this movie is that that Fury Road is literally just a car chase and uh, yeah. big action set pieces, and literally to the point where it's just like, all right, let's just turn around. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like we're gonna drive to a place <laughs> and just go back. Like I I don't uh, like when people summarize movies in like the dumbest like basic way but literally that is the plot of the movie <laughs> like it that's right. just what happens like drive to a place oh shit they're not there turn around everybody but it was fun it was really fun um it was very fun my wife my little wife really enjoyed that movie and i was like i think you'll like this and she was like mm. and then it was kind of the same thing like oh shit like this is actually kind of interesting and and like really fun it's just a that Fury Road is the best example of when people say like it's it, describing movies as a um, um, like an amusement park ride. That's what Fury Road is. There's yeah. there's very little dialogue. You're just in it for the big stunts and you know these these like great shots and everything else. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Who gives a shit? It's fun. I love that this guy tricked a bunch of dudes into going to see a girl movie. A girl power movie. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Even even uh, even Nicholas Holt's character had an arc, and he's just a fucking maniac. And he just and then as soon as he, and then as soon as he felt the touch of a woman, he was like, you know what? This is uh, I actually like this. Yeah. Let me let me call cal- let me calm the fuck down. George Miller <laughs> had an answer to the gender wars. Uh, a, a decade before the shit started. And um, I think all these red pill fucking men going their own way need to sit down and watch Fury Road. Yeah, those guys, the the uh, the wild boys, they're just a bunch of incels. <laughs> that's all they are. Yeah, that's literally all yeah. they are. <laughs> Witness me. And, right. Morton, and Morton Joe is fucking fresh and fit. Right. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> right. Fit. And well, and or Trump in a lot of ways, <laughs> like uh, yeah, that also yeah. yeah. And he died in a wonderful way. It was great. <laughs> Your face and the movie just down. looks awesome. It does. Considering yeah, it it's does. just dirt and sand and shit, it fucking looks amazing. Right? That 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 color palette yeah. that he uses. Yeah, the color palette is crazy. Yeah, I I haven't watched it in because there's a black and white version. I have to imagine that's also pretty uh, pretty great to see too. Um, but yeah, yeah it's cool. yeah, the black and chrome edition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, the the only thing that sucks is that that movie, Fury Road, took a long time to happen. I mean, it it had a bunch, like a bunch of stoppages and everything else. Um, And Miller's just getting like, I mean, he's pretty up there. He's 79 years old. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't I don't know that he has another one in him, which is unfortunate. The, the the talk is that Furiosa is not as good as Fury Road, but also still very, very good. So, you know. Oh, darn, is it slightly not as good? All right, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, all right, cool. Um, who, which one of you watched um, um, uh, MJ I make watched, two white uh, boys have sex with each other? I watched Challengers. and um, That's when I turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> you turned it off when they... <laughs> I got, like, honestly, I was, got, made it. I, was, I was already bored. And then when they were in the hotel room, she was she comes in and they're like eating pizza or whatever, or they wanted to order a pizza, and then they start kissing. I'm like, I'm done. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. Not because I'm not because I'm a homophobe or nothing like that. It's because I was already just bored. 
And I'm like, I want to look. That's when I want to see this. That's when that's when me and my wife were like, oh, okay. Like we thought it was going to be a little more manipulation. You know what I mean? Like this is no uh, manipulation needed. (laughs) Apparently not. Okay. They were they were more than willing to cuck each other with each other. Like it was wild. And she just dipped out of there like <laughs> Yeah, she's like, Well, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. Well, I'm not very interested in this. I might finish it eventually, but um What did you think? Look, I just wasn't movie, though. Was it I wasn't intrigued. I I thought the movie was really good, man. I thought uh I thought this is uh this movie is what happens when you don't follow the old adage bros before hoes. When you put the hoes before the bros, you get this movie. And um, I think this movie's great. I think, uh, you know, I, I'm not going out on a limb here. Zendaya is quite the movie star. She is um, at this point. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, people, are, you know, sometimes every once in a while there's a debate about like, well, there are no big movie stars anymore, right? Like where's like like Tom Cruise is a big movie star. Like his name can can open a movie. Zendaya can open a movie. And at this point, at this point, I will watch whatever uh, she's in Um, because I think she's I think she's got uh, real talent. Um, Basically, this movie is these two uh, these two best friends who are, you know, tennis players. They eventually um, meet with uh, Tashi Duncan, who is Zendaya. And um, they kind of are vying for her affection. One of the guys ultimately ends up with her, but the three of them have have a chemistry with each other. And um, I don't want to give too much away because I, I think Jay, you would, you and uh, you and your wife would really. <laughs> I think you and your wife would really enjoy it. Um, That's a really weird way of saying that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you had a very sinister sound into your voice. I think. You yeah, know. you, your neighbor, and your wife would probably. Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> hey, you guys are freaks. Why don't you check out Challengers? <laughs> now, now to Terrence's to Terrence's point, the movie does take a minute to kind of get going. Yeah, it does because the, the the movie takes a minute to get going, and there's needless um, time jumping throughout the movie. And um, I, I feel like there was a, be- a better way to more eloquently, you know, tell the story without saying this is present day. This is 13 years in the past, but now we're in present day, but this is 11 years. But then this is two weeks from the 11 years. And then this is back to 13 years ago. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of that going on. But uh, but I, I overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really, really good. Okay, all right. I, I thought the trailer looked good, so all right. That, that, that's I'll finish confirmation. It. Since you, since you, you, you're putting your stamp of approval on, I'll finish it. Because again, that was one of the reasons. I'm like, yo, just take. I was, that's about. It was take, like thirty yeah. minutes of the movie. It, yeah, it was. I mean, it takes like 35, 40 minutes before you even get yeah. to that to that part. And the movies, the movies only like two hours uh, yeah. before credits. So it does take a minute to get going, but once it does get going, um, and you see how the relationships, um, you know, cause you see the relationship in the future and it takes a while for the past to catch up to the future. But once, once it starts rolling, then it gets more, uh, more interesting. Okay. Sword fighting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the movie. Um, uh, I, know how the, I know how the world works. Um, all right. So lastly, just real quick, I had a chance to watch the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Um, I enjoyed it. I don't know if people – do people know what's happening in Hollywood right now? I think they're being very, very obvious that killing Nazis is a thing we should all support. <laughs> I think like there's been a lot of like – you guys remember, like, killing Nazis is cool, right? Like, we're totally fine with killing fascists. Um, the movie is very fun. Guy Ritchie is at his best when he is doing things like this, whether they are sort of, 
you know, British crime films or these sort of sort of ahistorical – I mean, I know it's, a, it's based on a real story, but sort of ahistorical um, – movies with a uh, ragtag group of um, fun actors. The thing I like about this movie the most is the cast. Like, the cast is really fun, kind of like everybody. Um, Everybody survives. Even the one moment where I was like, they're not going to kill the black dude, are they? Nope. (laughs) They didn't, (laughs) Uh, which was great, where it's like his gun got jammed, and the guy's like, ah, your gun doesn't work. And he was like, yeah, but I got this knife, though. Stab. Um, Which I appreciate it. Everybody just seems very cool. The movie is very cool. Uh, Cavill, I thought, did a good job as the lead. Um, If anything, the movie's slightly too long. For, for my taste. It's, it's slightly, I think it's like two hours. It could have probably been about an hour 45, hour 30. Um, so other than that, it's a, it's a pretty good time. The violence is good. The, you know, the action in general is good. The story is, is um, pretty entertaining. I would watch his sort of retelling of world history. If Guy Ritchie wants to do a bunch of like little known sort of stories like this, I would watch all of them. hundred <coughs> um, percent. And it's just kind of dope that the cast is very diverse and everybody gets a moment. I thought that was kind of fun. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a good story. Um, very interesting. It's a shame nobody fucking watched it. Is that right? Like, this did very poorly. This, is, this I think, is technically considered a bomb. Wow. And, um, that, that is unfortunate. Yeah, it, 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 didn't, uh, it didn't do well. Uh, which is, uh, like you said, it's a shame because oh, no, I, 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 Jesus Christ, I mean, yeah, 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 22 million on a 60 million dollar budget. God, damn. Yeah. yeah, that's a bomb, <laughs> yeah, with a and, sub hundred million dollar budget. That's crazy, yeah. Oof. Uh, I don't know if it was just the timing, um, I don't that's know what else came out around that time, um. It's been, but, it came out like three weeks ago. <laughs> April 19th. I mean, it feels like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, this oh, yeah. Before, before we, I, I watched um, Fall Guy. Take, whatever, take everything you said, uh, Jay, and just p- plant it in the Fall Guy, except for it's, it's just uh, Ryan Gosling. It and, looks uh, fun. I re- I'm, I'm going to watch Emily it this Blunt. It's, it's, I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, it's a love story. With um, an action movie wrapped into it, and a love yep. letter to a, a stuntman. That's pretty much all it is. And their chemistry is really good. It's like if I was a uh, what's her name, Ava Mendes. Who who was he married to? Ava Mendes. Eva Mendes. Yeah. Eva Mendes. I'd be side side eyeing this nigga real, real quick because their chemistry is really good <laughs> in this movie. I'd be like, that was fucking. <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, it was really cool. And they and and it, they did the thing. They actually, like, I think you said this last week uh, or the week before, whenever you saw it. They actually have conversations with each other. Um, yeah. As to what the fuck happened, why they broke up. Uh, it's good. Yeah, they. It's, it's it's a romantic comedy, so you have you have to have the fucking bullshit. Like, yeah. uh, they don't talk to each other until the, but they don't wait to the end of the movie to. To right. yeah. you know, come to this realization uh, because you know we still got an action movie to make, uh, which is stunts were cool. Yeah, stunts were fucking done. They better be. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah it's kind of, <laughs> kind of predicated but, on that. Yeah, um, no, it's it's a fun, it's just a fun fucking movie. I really like that split screen because this is this is not even an action sequence. I like that split screen uh, sequence. They yeah, did when they were actually on the phone with each other. Just that scene alone, I was like, "This is pretty cool." I've never seen it. That's no it, way great that. choreography. Great choreography. Yeah. Of two people talking <laughs> like on a phone. Choreography of talking on a phone. It's Wait, it's dope. just them talking on the phone? Like that's it? There's nothing. There's no action sequence happening to one of them or something. No, there's no action. No, there's no action. No, it's, it's just, just they having a conversation on the phone. That's, that's that. That's a that's likely a rip from when Harry met Sally. It's like a very famous scene of them, like a split scene, them talking. So it's probably it's probably pulled okay. from a number of things like that. So. Yeah, I mean, I that's think fine. they probably pulled from a bunch of stuff. They were playing different songs from different movies and shit like that while yeah, he was doing I'm stunts. Not, I mean, that makes <laughs> sense. I mean, if it's a love letter to stuntmen or just a love yeah. letter to movie making in general, yeah, that makes sense. The one thing, there's one thing about the movie that left me scratching my head, right? 
Didn't Ryan Gosling's character say he was like a stuntman on Miami on Vice? On Miami Vice. I'm like, this nigga was <laughs> five? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, yo, you got this, has you a, got this Miami has, Vice stuntman jacket? And it was like, well, wait a minute. How old are you, bro? <laughs> right. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, bro, that's the time like you were on. years so- old. Right, that's the time you were on Star Search. Knock it off. Right, like that doesn't make any sense. You were a kid jumping boats. All right, that doesn't make. Maybe it was the Miami Vice movie in 06. Oh, no, no, he said it. Oh, he said he the said show. It. I know he said the show. Yeah. I was like, the that's movie. stupid. But okay, what are you, seventy five years old, nigga? What's going on? He looks great. But no, nah, it was. Yeah, it was. That was a little weird. But um, besides that, it was. It was a great movie. I enjoyed half of it. And it came out like a week and a half ago. <laughs> in the yeah, theaters, it, which yeah, is crazy it, to me. Yeah, it went to digital real quick. Yeah, this was another movie that didn't do as well as um, as well as people wanted it to do because it's you know it's got something for everybody, right? Like it's 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 an action movie for the guys, right? It's a it's a love story for the ladies, right? And it's a bunch of silly stunts for like not children, but like. Kids, you could take your kids to see this movie, and it would be perfectly fine. So, yeah. it's they PG-13, were. It's not, it's not yeah. egregious. It's not fucking like super offensive or anything like that. It's a fun time. Man. Right. Yeah, it made one hundred and thirty million dollars on one hundred and twenty-five to one hundred and fifty million dollar budget. Yeah, that's not I good, mean, man. That's not good. That's unfortunate. Mm. But again, that's like this idea budget. that, I, I, like, people make the argument: we need all of these like sub one hundred or just a hundred million dollar movies. We just talked about two of them, and y'all motherfuckers didn't go see them. <laughs> like, right? Like, come on, man. Like, no, we no, we can say we didn't go. See, I didn't go see. Them. I don't go to the movies anymore. But I didn't make the no. argument about the sub one hundred million. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the fucking hypocrite. Yeah, I didn't say anything out of that. I, just yeah, I never said a goddamn thing. Whether I go to the movie theater or not, I, don't. I just go to see movies that I like. I don't care what the budgets are. Like, I, I don't. I like, and I don't really care the genre. Right? Like, I just like movies yeah. that I like. Like. Some people are like, I only see things that are like that. I'm like, I don't do that. I'm like, you know, show me something good. That's it. Um, all right. So uh, let's take a quick break and then we'll get into topics. All right. Topics this week. Micah, take it away. Natasha Leone joins the cast of the Fantastic Four. Um, Speculation? Uh I mean, the first thing I think of, <laughs> the first thing I think of is uh, Alicia Masters, the uh, the blind woman who um, who eventually marries Ben Grimm um, because she, you know, gets to know him for who he is and not for what he looks like—a giant rock monster. Um, I can't think off the top of my head who. Uh, you know who she would be. Um, she has a very unique voice, but I can't place that voice in any kind of supernatural character or anything like that. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I like plus, I I see I see her and Eben Moss Bach Rock as I I can see those two together, right? I could see I it works. I could see improving the shit out of some scenes. Yeah, yeah, you know what? That it does make sense. Like does she meet I, I'm not a like I'm not a huge Fantastic Four person so I don't know like all of their like deeper lore. Does she meet Ben before he becomes a disgusting rock monster or does she know him as a, <laughs> a regular dude? I I think it I think it depends on which it, it depends on what story you read, I think. Um but I, as far as I, as far as I can remember, and look, I got a bad memory, and I'm not a fucking, uh, I, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of of the Fantastic Four. But as far as I know, they they met after he became uh, a rock monster. Yeah, it's a shame. For hmm. her. How does a sex situation work with that? He's rock hard all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a family show. This is not a family show. <laughs> that joke was really stupid, but it was fucking funny. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, know, you got me. <laughs> uh, okay. So, 
So yeah, they just don't I, have sex. Is basically what you're saying. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know that. That's unfortunate. You don't know that, you don't know that right? You don't know what I, she's into. I mean, look at look at her, look at that face. Look at look at this particular picture on uh, on this particular website, and you tell me she ain't doing some some nasty stuff to rocks. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, yeah, with know. that face, I feel like she's like, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like the I like the idea of her meeting. Actually, I, by the way, I actually like Natasha uh, Leon a lot. I think she's really good. It's unfortunately, and I, I say this with all due respect, it was one of the worst episodes of The Blocks I've ever heard. Um, interviewing her is madness. Like, it, it just is. <laughs> like, I can't listen to her being interviewed. It, it's just crazy. Um, but I she's like all over. Yeah, she's all over the place. Um, she's got recovery written all over her, <laughs> like, in a very extreme way. Um, but I like her as an actress a lot. Um, I think it would be interesting to show her and Ben, if she's playing that character, um, her and Ben meeting before he becomes a, 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 a repulsive rock monster. And like you said, having those two actors play off each other, then he becomes this, you know, this monster. And she's like, you know what? I'll allow it. Cause I like who I mean, you she, are. Right. Like, I think that would be, I mean, I think be fun. She's blind. Right. right. So right. it, it wouldn't, know. you know, it wouldn't matter. It's just a stack to her. She don't know if she got fifties, fifties or ones. Like she don't know. <laughs> So, it's fine. so yeah, no, that's uh, that's pretty good casting. I, I'm not I'm not mad at that casting at all. Yeah, I I I'm just happy that this movie is um is coming together. It's I mean, happy. we all know we all know who we are actually waiting for. Um, <laughs> Obviously, but uh, uh, until then, uh, I'm not gonna. Until then, I'm not going to get like overly excited. Now, what but, if she's playing Doom? Have you thought about that? <laughs> 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 a raspy oh, that would be a hilarious <laughs> Doom, my nigga. <laughs> I would go see it just for that. I'm, I'm just lie. saying, you don't know. You <laughs> don't know. Uh, I, I watch it. Fuck, yeah, I don't give I'm a just shit. Saying. I've That's seen worse. Let, <laughs> you certainly have. You fucking certainly have. Like, let us not speak from a point of ignorance. She could be doing. That would be a wild choice. I'd be like, all right, Marvel. Like, like I'm all for empowerment, but this is getting out of fucking hand. Like, come on. Man. Um, this is a weird choice. So yeah, okay, yeah, I'm I'm totally fine with it. All right. Next up, um, Marvel is um, coming out with a new series. Uh, this one stars Paul Bettany. He will be reprising his role as the Vision or Vision. Uh, and they have tapped Star Trek Picard executive producer Terry Metalis to uh, bring this thing uh, to life. Um, after Vision died at the hands of Thanos in, in 2008's Infinity War, he returned twice over. In WandaVision, first as a spectral creation created by his beloved Wanda um, through the magic power of grief um, and then rebuilt. Another, okay, okay. He came, he came back twice as Vision, White Vision. Uh, Marvel brought in Metallus after his work running season three of Star Trek Picard. Has anybody watched that? Like, I want to watch it, but like, I, I heard, heard the heard first one was good. I heard the first season is good. I heard the second season is not. And uh, I haven't heard anything about the third season. Uh, it must be good if they're bringing this guy in. Um, yeah, sounds like it. So, all right. Uh, Marvel's Marvel's making another TV show. Now, look, they Marvel's come out recently and said that, like, they're going to brand these TV shows uh, as, like, you know, kind of like one-shots. So that you don't have to feel like you need to consume everything. Yeah, Marvel um, Spotlights. I think I think, it, I think it's called. Yeah, because it's a lot, man. It's a lot, and they realize that burnout is a thing, um, and you don't want it to start feeling like homework. And but it's also kind of it also kind of 
it also kind of sucks that like they have to say that like people aren't smart enough to realize that like if you don't want to watch the marvels you don't have to yeah right like and not not that there's anything wrong with the marvels i'm just picking what uh you know i'm just picking what uh what 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 dudes would uh would find a problem because girls are in it correct and uh and they don't like women they're uh, they're like Nicholas Holt's character in that movie that just came out, Mad Max: Fury Road. <laughs> <laughs> it's sweeping the this nation. Is not coming up to twenty twenty six like again. Yeah, what is the point? Yo? Now, yo. Just I don't you know. Know. God damn! You know, wake up, yeah. get ready. <laughs> Look, I think this is fine. Um, I, like. I don't know where this character is going. It's interesting. I mean, the last time we saw him, like the white version of him, like flew off to, you know, figure himself out as a robot, which is weird. Um, so yeah, okay. I don't care until I like show me something, show me a trailer, like let me know what the story is. the The talk is that this is going to be sort of based on that one comic where he has a he builds his own family. Um, so that should be interesting. Like, how does that work? Is is Scarlet Witch still alive? A lot of people seem to think she is. I don't think she is, but we'll see. Did Did you see a body that nobody else saw? No, but she got crushed by a rock. Did you rock. see a body? She's, she's a witch. Big. Rock big. She a witch. She's a witch. Rock big. Bamf. Could have could have uh, bamfed her ass out of there. I guess. Yeah. I don't. Um, know, so we'll see. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't fucking know. I, I guess the 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 question is, you know, the the obvious hack question is, do we need this? Do we well, need a Vision TV? I show? I mean, people said, do we need X Men? And uh, people got to shut the fuck up about that. <laughs> so, who I don't the fuck know. said, do we need X Men? No, everybody. Said, no, no, X-Men. people. No, people absolutely said, do we need like more of that series? Is what I mean, like more of the ninety seven series. People absolutely said that, and uh, turns out they were very wrong. All right. So I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I don't really have an opinion on whether this is worth it or, like, does it work in the grand storytelling? I don't know. I don't know what their fucking plans are. So Well, that's the thing. They don't necessarily want you to, to think that way anymore. Well, fuck them. I'm going to think that way anyway. You can tell me. <laughs> I'm an adult. I know the deal. Grown oh, men yeah, say whatever it? the fuck they want, right? That's right. Get over it, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Skip it, Jim. Beth. Oh, very upset with us. Uh, it's been confirmed that Wonder Man will be a standalone Marvel Spotlight series while MCU Brad exec, Brad, uh, MCU exec Brad Winderbaum uh, elaborates on the decision to resurrect Marvel tele- the Marvel television banner for Disney Plus. Um, yeah, I'm not reading all this. Wonder Man is coming, and it's going to be kind of like a one-off, like um, Werewolf by Night, I would assume. Exactly. Uh, which which was dope. I I really enjoyed Werewolf by Night, but you know what? That's all I really need of it. I don't need. Uh, I'm not into like you know, occult shit. Cause, uh, I'm well adjusted. And, um, that, that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, like, what was it? A movie, mini movie, short movie. Yeah. It was like a short, uh, short film. That was perfect. That, that is, that is all I need. Um, and it, look, it's a good litmus test to, um, to, uh, test the waters with characters. Um, without, you know, committing to establishing a whole wing of the MCU, right? Um, and you can introduce, you know, you can introduce characters that way and then reintroduce them. And if you know, you know, you don't, you don't. Yeah. So I think it's I think super easy. Yeah, I think this is a I think this is a good idea. I think it's a good approach. It's it's the only way to really keep things fresh um because people don't like doing homework. 
and the movies have not been uh, stellar as of late that people feel like they have to quote unquote go see them. So yeah, keep going this way and, uh, and we'll see what DC does. Yeah. I mean, look, apropos of nothing, um, Deadpool and Wolverine is tracking for a hundred plus million dollar opening weekend. So the interest is there. You just got to deliver. If you can deliver, I think people, I think the the audience is there, um, ready to come back in full force. But I, I think especially coming off of that X Men series, I think that really helped them. Yeah. Um, I think immediately people were like, "Oh shit, really? All right, well, let's see what you can do." Right. So. But X Men and them are well known characters. I don't know what the fuck a Wonder Man is. Oh no 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 no, <laughs> no g- granted I I agree with you I agree with you I mean Wonder Man has a lot of history involving like Envision and and a and a bunch oh. of shit but I don't think that's the route they're taking with this just because Vision has already been around like part of Vision's sort of design is based on Wonder Man his brain waves or whatever so like they didn't do all of that so they just kind of s- skipped past all that so I don't think they'll they'll um They'll do that in the in the movies or TV show either, but um, yeah, I think I think X Men helped them a lot for people to go, oh shit, Marvel still got it. But they got it if they can deliver on Deadpool and Wolverine. I think that will do that will do wonders to get people back and excited for the MCU again. So like we'll see. Um, I don't know what will happen. Um, all right, let's take a quick break and then we'll continue in topics. Okay, uh, next up, Killian Murphy will join the cast of 28 Years Later, the, um, the series he kicked off um, with Danny Boyle. So apparently in a recent interview with Deadline, um, a piece of shit, Sony Movies Picture uh, Group chairman Tom Rothman, he's a terrible person, uh, was asked if Murphy would be joining the cast. And um, he says yes, but in a surprising way, in a way that grows, uh, let me put it that way. So... Cool. Great. Um, he is kind of the main character in the first movie, um, and he was very good in it. So it's kind of nice to know that this is, this is tying back into the original. So I'm going to try my best to see if I can sit down and watch this um, in the coming weeks. I really want to – it's been a long time since I've seen it. But, um, the I original? Do recall, yeah. I do recall enjoying it. I'm going to watch both of them. Um, the second one is, is less good. Um, but it, it was kind of fun. That one was with Jeremy Renner, uh, if I recall. So I need to try to finish the first one. <laughs> I, I think you, I think you would, how far did you get? 30 minutes in something like that. I thought you said, um, they made it to a mall. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think you should continue. Answer. I think you should continue. Okay. I really do. Um, Here's some great news. Mike Coulter says he's passed the role of Luke Cage. Great. I believe you. I don't, I don't need to believe read anyone further. was asking him about that. I'm <laughs> asking. Good. I love your answer. Let's go ahead and let's get the recast of rolling, buddy. Let's go. Um, <laughs> Luke Cage star Mike Coulter is open to playing Power Man. Boo. Um, again, but admits I'm past it. Look, he's too good for this role. He don't need y'all. Let's just, re- just, just recast. It's all right. Um, he wants us to. <laughs> He says, I don't stay up uh, at night thinking about it, nor do I recall it uh, unless someone brings it up. See, he's talking shit. Um, but I enjoyed my time. Uh, I, don't, I don't look in the past. Excuse me. Um, if something comes up, great. We'll talk about it. But right now, I'm past it. Cool. Me too, Mike. Um, so this sounds great. I think we are, we are right here, buddy. Simpatico. So... Um, well, um- who, who would you uh, who would you want to see hmm. as uh, Luke Cage? I mean, The Rock is available, right? Isn't that who people fan casted for years? Which is the worst choice <laughs> I've ever heard. Um, Luke Cage actors. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like a, an unknown would be pretty good. I, I, I honestly don't know who I'd pick. Uh, let's see. Let's pull up because we got time. Uh, let's let's pull up black actors and see who would make a uh, a good Luke Cage. Denzel Washington is the first name that pops up. When- 
<laughs> you put in black actors? Remember, um, what, remember Morris Chestnut said that he was in the running? Remember that? <laughs> no, he isn't. No, he isn't. Um, we'll give it to Morris Chestnut, too, wouldn't they? They would probably to go, he's black and bald. That was it. Oh, That's all we thought. Morgan um, Freeman. Seems a little old. Sure, why not? Sydney Portier. I don't think we need to update this list. Um, he's no longer with us. You know, if uh, Winston, if, if Winston Duke Winston wasn't Duke, already, yeah. already, you know, committed to a different, you know, character, I think he would be pretty dope. That's not bad. Um, he's big enough for the role. Yeah, he's he's big and intimidating enough. Um. Can't see Aldous Hodge doing it. Um, uh, uh, Kofi Sibere, Sirobi Sibere. Oh, the dude from uh, uh, Gangs of London. Is that who you're talking about? No, no. What's that dude? No, no, no. He he was on uh, Queen Sugar. Yeah, he was on Queen Sugar. No, you would. I don't uh, see you. Him. You don't know don't that because because that's that's a black woman yeah. show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Isn't the music too loud? Isn't the music too loud, Terrence? <laughs> no, as you tried to watch that, you were like, "Nah, the music is just like way too loud for some reason." What's Queen Sugar? No, that was something else. Was it the? I must. I, mean, I think that was a church show. It's a church show. Briar. Greenleaf. Mm-hmm. Greenleaf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it may have been a church show. It was it too loud or was it just church music? <laughs> Probably church music. Honestly. Like, I yo, got, it's got, minimal. Got, He's like, I can still hear it turn this off. I don't, I don't like I don't like I don't like Jesus music. I don't like Jesus music. I don't, I don't, like, music. Uh, no, I don't, I don't like, like it either. Um, <laughs> I don't like God. I don't like gospel music. Um Kofi no. Bay is too you? Siro Sirobo Siribo. Is he the dude? too small? Was he the guy He was, was in Girl Strip? Like I was uh, the grapefruit guy, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Girl. All right. Oh, I know this guy. I know this guy recently had a bit of a stinker, but I think this could be his mea culpa. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. All, right. all right. I think he's I too think short. He well, yeah, he is kind of he's short. Big. Isn't he? He's a big he's dude. He's big, I mean, but he, I think he's too he, short. Wide enough. But, you know, so, fucking, so is, uh, so is, um, Iron Man. Who's that guy? Robert Downey Robert Jr. Downey. That guy had lifts in his shoes when he stood next to Gwyneth Paltrow. That's how short he was. Sure. So you can you can you can <clears> Trevante Rhodes. Rhodes. Trevante Rhodes. That's not bad. Um, That's not bad. You know, it isn't. The, um, what's what about the dude yeah. from um I don't know how tall he is, but the the guy from the first purge. That dude. Uh like, no, he's shorter yeah. than Trevante Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Like, I, I don't know. Was it? It's like Elon something. Elon. Yeah. Null. Uh, Elon Null. Yeah. Trevante Rose is six work. feet. That works. Oh, he is? Really? He looks shorter. Yeah, he's a giant in Hollywood. <laughs> Elon, <laughs> Elon Null is five ten. Again, another giant in Hollywood. Again, he looks uh, like he's two. I, I think these niggas are lying about the height. They're all. <laughs> they're all. Lying. They're all lying. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Like, you don't look that fucking tall. But um, there's a nigga, there's a power force. There's a black dude on power force. I know none of you watched the power. Any of the, I know you watched the first series, Micah. I watched or, power. Not, uh, I fin- I fin- I watched all of it. I watched all of it oh. because I'm a good husband. No, nah, Trevante Rhodes is five ten. He's lying. He's lying. Get out of here. Uh, Me, Trevante nigga, Rhodes. I think his name is right. Isaac Keys. He's just this big fucking dude. He's six foot four. He's a big, bald, black dude. He would work. And he's a yeah, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, oh, yeah. that's, yeah. that's what you need. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. That's, 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 I can see the dude swinging the chain around. Yeah, no, that, that yeah, works. He, he would that work. Works. Uh, and he's pretty good. He's actually pretty good in uh, power. He's one of the better actors on the show. Uh, dude, he's the one huge. with Tommy. Uh, All right. He used to play That'll football. Work. He used to play for the Cardinals. Yep, I, I can see so. that. So, yes. All right, okay. there you go. But I, 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 Luke Cage. Oh, and he's six four. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. fucking huge, and he's like legitimately six four because he used to play sports, and they're not lying about their fucking right. You, yeah, they <laughs> you know what I'm saying? on the back of your tops card. You can't lie about that. Um, <laughs> stop, still a thing. I don't know. Um, but 
Yeah, okay. And he's 45 years old. That'll work. Luke Cage is not supposed to be 20. Like he's supposed to be he's supposed to be a a man of a certain age. Um Yeah, I I just like my culture was just too prim and proper, man. Like he just was. Not to be a He dick. felt like um, you know, hindsight being 2020. He felt like I know like that show was meant to be like a like a throwback to the black exploitation era, but I think they did it a little too well in that, you know, in the black exploitation era, you had these Juilliard trained thespians playing pimps and shit. And <laughs> it's, it, it, there was always something kind of off about it. Yeah. Inauthentic. Um, yeah. Yes. Inauthentic. yes. Again, I, not to be an asshole, I need Luke Cage to be a um, that actor to be a little bit more niggerish. I do. I like. I know that's not fair and it's not right. I'm just saying. I do. I do. I need to. And this dude would be perfect. Like you know what? He honestly like would be perfect. Yeah. Pick somebody. Just pick somebody else. Um, look, uh, he should. My culture should call up uh, the guy who played Danny Rand and just be like, "You should also say that you're over it." I think this is a great idea. So, <laughs> let's all join together by not being in these movies anymore. Um, Yoga body. <laughs> Fucking Nigga, I'm more shredded than that dude. I'm more shredded. I should be Iron Fist. Get out of here. <laughs> How dare you. Um, all right. Next up, X-Men movie uh, at Marvel Studios gains momentum as Michael Leslie comes on as a screenwriter. So Michael Leslie um, seems to be best known for the Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Um, I have not <laughs> seen that one. So I don't I don't have a um I don't have a thought on his work. What I would say is you never know with writers, right? Like sometimes you can get these great writers, they come on and they do work and you're like, that was what we expected and it was excellent. And sometimes they make fucking turd scripts. Um and then some people that have done things that maybe are not so great or very like middling work come and write amazing scripts. Um because they're you know, it's not written in a um in a vacuum. Right, so you have a team and everything else. So I don't know um, whether this guy is like the guy to um, that's like the best of the best. But people seem to people seem to be uh, at Marvel seem to be cool with it. He he also did. Um, he's writing the now awaited sequel to the Now You See Me franchise, the third one. Why that movie's getting a third movie, I do not know. Um, again, awaited by who? Magicians everywhere? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is what's a third movie? Uh, again, a third one, right? There was a yes. That. Again, yeah. the fact that the second movie is and now you don't is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I think they have real magical powers because they had real magic at the end of the first. One. I saw the first one in theaters because fuck my life and. Um, I didn't see the second one, but I'm pretty sure at the end of the first movie, they were introduced to Mark Ruffalo's character having real magical powers. And so then they got inducted into the like, we all have magical power society. So I guess they all have magical powers in the second movie and maybe in the third one, which seems really dumb because it is. So, cool. So, I don't know. He was... Um, he was- this is wild. He was a writer for the 2015 version of Macbeth. The the, the Irish Michael one? Fassbender. The yeah, Michael the Fassbender. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. I enjoyed that. He also did another uh, Michael Fassbender movie. Would you like to take a guess? Please, please tell me it's not Assassin's Creed. Please tell it's me Assassin's not. Creed. It. Yes, it's <laughs> Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Oh, that movie, I saw that in theaters because, you know, I like video games. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know how the fuck you do like 80 20 sitting in, the, in the, what's it called? The Animus. The Animus. You're just like, you're sitting in like the Animus building for 80% of it, and like 20% of them is actually inside the Animus. Can you imagine it. if the games were like that? Like the games Nigga. just got rid of the, <laughs> the games just got rid of the real world shit. Like fuck, who oh, really? like, they, fuck they, they, they just toss the shit. We're going back yeah, in time. Fuck it. it, fuck it. That these are just stories now. Who gives a shit? Like oh wow, and they did I that. didn't know that. That's they, funny. 
they did that to try and over explain like why there's a HUD, right? Like why you have a, a heads up display <laughs> that, that shows your life bar and shit. Like, well, you're actually going into the end with the- No, fuck that. Nobody gives a shit. It's a fucking history lesson now. You you play you boot up Assassin's Creed Odyssey and then you can go to a fucking museum and learn about ancient Greece. Who gives a shit? <laughs> I really like Odyssey. I, put, I, I loved Odyssey. Odyssey, Odyssey, <laughs> Odyssey is Odyssey might be my favorite one. That's no, the not the pirate one. one. No, not the pirate. The pirate. <laughs> oh, shit. It's the, it's the green Fuck one. The pirate are you, one. You, are you guys playing the the new one with the with the uh, the the fake uh, the fake black samurai? Right. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm, niggas in I'm Japan. Get it out of spite. Like the, the, the new Japanese, the new uh, Jay Z song, niggas in Japan. Like, I, <laughs> I find that I find the choices absolutely hilarious because they are one hundred percent pandering. But I don't give yes, a fuck. Yes, they are box checking <laughs> like a motherfucker. Like they are box checking like a motherfucker. It's and the fact so that it makes people so ridiculous. mad, the fact that it makes people mad is the reason why I'm gonna buy it. The fuck out of here. I saw that I, I trailer. Would. First of all, I, I I hate trailers. I hate fucking cinematic trailers because don't like again don't show gameplay. But when I saw it, it was it was what's his name? Uh, Yasuke. Yeah, Yasuke. and yeah, and a chick. I was like, this is really ridiculous. But you know, you, what? They, they're I gonna know make you furious, right? And it's not even about I, them. You're not Japanese, right. nigga. What you mad for? <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. I love They've that. always wanted it. Like, oh, did you like the new? Are you excited it. for the new Assassin's Creed? It's gonna finally be in Japan. Yeah, it's awesome. You're gonna have to pick a nigger or a woman. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> that's the funniest. I just wanted to pick a Japanese man. No, that's not an option. Go watch Shogun. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, no, that's great. That's great. Look, I love it. They should make. They should make one Japanese guy and make it a side quest. Yeah, there you go. There no, you, go. you get it. No, right. no, you got it. no, no, don't give them the option. No, don't give them the option. If I if I have to play uh, games and I don't get the option to play a, a black guy, then you don't get the option. Get the fuck That's out fair. of here. That's fair. I, I'm no. sur- I, honestly, I'm surprised fucking they didn't figure out a way to put, uh, what is his name, like, Editori Enzo or whatever. They're like, oh, and then he went to Japan. Like, yeah, great. <laughs> didn't that dude get like three games? Like, all right, that's, that's yeah, he got a, yeah, he got a yeah, he got a couple of you know, yeah, all, all right. these motherfuckers complaining about historical accuracy. Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci wasn't the fucking gadget man for an assassin in the Renaissance. Shut the fuck up with your goddamn historical accuracy bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Why is why is uh, Da Vinci the cue uh, to your James Bond? <laughs> Those guys make no sense. Right. Ooh, it is on my flying machine. Like what the fuck? No, dude. No. I, Shut the fuck up. I You're just being some, fucking racist. Yeah, you are. I like. I, I saw the one video. This one video it was very funny. This guy's like, Assassin's Creed is a game. Is a game series that is all about historical accuracy, and he, he just has all these videos from the game playing in the background. It's like you fighting a giant alligator with like a crown on its head. It's like these right. things are really important to me. Like, yeah, this is fucking <laughs> stupid. What no, in Assassin's Creed Origins, you fight like giants and Anubis and shit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. that's no, I think that's these what it was. Are, I don't fucking, these things are real, guys. Assassin's Creed <laughs> Valhalla. You, you you partnered with Loki. One of the characters is Loki, nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> Real life <laughs> characters. <laughs> Shut the fuck you up. You know Valhalla's man. not real, right? <laughs> like, are people what? aware of that? <laughs> like, it's in the title is bullshit. <laughs> if I'm uh, not if I'm not centered in this game, I'm upset. I, I do love how <laughs> je- they're like, we're really upset. It's just, it's just white people are mad. And Japanese people are like, this game fucking rocks. <laughs> like, I like it. Like, who cares, dude? It took y'all 45 years to make it to Japan. Great. Thank you. Who cares? Let's just fucking make the game. I think it's hilarious. So, yeah, X-Men, um, Michael Leslie is writing it. Great. Sounds good. I just hope it's a good script. Again, there is no definitive way to know if his past work is going to be indicative of what he does here. Look, this is an X-Men movie. If you think Marvel is not going to pull out all the stops to get this shit exactly right, you're crazy. So um, if that script looks like it ain't perfect, 
they will bring in other people to make yeah. it. <laughs> so, right. like, they, they are right. not going to fuck this one up. I, mean, I That I can guarantee. Um, <laughs> speaking of fuck-ups, uh, Simon Kinberg is in talks to produce Star Trek movie franchise for Paramount. Uh, look, I don't like Simon Kinberg as a director, um, but as a producer, sure, whatever. Um, that's fine. Uh, he's doing more work with uh, Alex Kurtzman and uh, Akiva Goldman. Uh, Goldsman. Um, so, okay, that's fine. Look, they seem, Star Trek fans seem to be not the racist dumb ones, but general normal Star Trek fans uh, seem to be pretty happy with the Star Trek shows that are on Paramount. They seem to really like them. So um, I think this is probably a good thing to get these guys um, in there and make some more movies. The fourth Star Trek movie is still in like development hell. I don't know why. It feels like it should have been easy to do. Um, I think there's a quote. It's maybe not in this article, but from Chris Pine I read. It, they were like, oh, so what's happening with that? He was like, I have no idea. I don't know anything. So, um, Which I think he's telling the truth. So look, get more of those movies in there. So um, there's no reason for that franchise to just sit because you had a good thing going. Those J.J. Abrams movies actually work pretty well. Um, Star Trek Beyond especially. That, that, was, uh, that was very fun. The second movie, Into Darkness, was shit, I, I will happily admit. But, um, but uh, the third one was good. That was a nice reboot. So, okay. Hopefully you Lord help you more. if you didn't know who the fuck Khan was. Like, my name is Khan. Like, <laughs> okay. Uh, nice Kirk. jacket. Yeah. Nice <laughs> jacket, nigga. Like, get out of here. <laughs> like, why, why do I care? The first movie, the first Star Trek movie was great. Like, it, it was really, really great. And Beyond was really, really fun. And that, that was uh, Idris Elba playing a villain. He did actually a really good job on that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, those were good. Um, all right. We don't have any what the fuck stories this week. Sorry about that. Uh, trailers this week Trigger Warning, starring Jessica Alba in her full um, admittance that she's Latin. Um, She's looking really uh, – she's looking like she's got Mexican grandparents. So good for her. Um, this looks bad. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to see this. I'm tired of star fucker movies on Netflix. I'm going to watch Atlas. I can't wait to watch that piece of shit with J-Lo. <laughs> but I'm, um, I'm, I'm tired of this. I, I'm, I'm super tired of it. What do you guys think? Uh, is it Triple H? Oh, no. It's not him. <laughs> what the hell is that? Like? <laughs> um, <laughs> like I just saw somebody. I'm like, okay. Uh, as a quick glance, um, look, it's it's a Netflix movie. It's hit or miss. This looks like a a miss. Oh, um, I might check it out. Maybe somebody's gonna tell no me telling if I'm gonna finish it or not, but I, I'll start it. Who knows? I might get through it. Uh, that's Micah. The, how many that's times like have you watched this movie? You're a huge Jessica yeah, Alba uh, action fan. I got I got nothing, man. I don't know. Um, I I I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't. I'm I'm all for uh, you know letting other people letting letting as many different types of people you know be in front of and behind the camera. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, yo. Like this doesn't this doesn't do anything for me. And one is a Netflix movie. Like I understand Netflix might be like buying this thing and getting people exposure and stuff, but Jessica Alba exposure. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, ta- Alba. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the director. Cause I've never seen this director before. This director is, um, some Indonesian lady. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Gotcha. Good for you. And, you know, that's great, right? That's wonderful. Um, but this just, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not, I'm not believing it. Like, look at the way this dude is swinging his chainsaw, yo. Like, nah, man. Like, nah. Texas chainsaw massacre. Like Leatherface. That's what he was yeah, doing at the end of the movie. It. Yeah, it's it's a it's a Leatherface fucking is huge, and this guy got taken out by a backpack, <laughs> like like <laughs> I mean, like come on, yeah. like, 
He really did. That's so <laughs> like, like, come on, man. Like, like, was the chainsaw on? Because like the the chainsaw got wrapped up in the backpack. You know, like, I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm not buying it. Yeah, was it on? Because he just picked up the chainsaw in a in a. Uh, I mean, they made the sound. Right, that's <laughs> what they just have gassed up chainsaws and, and fucking in the store. I don't shop. know if anybody's. I don't know if anybody's ever. I don't know if anybody's ever uh, operated a, a, a gas powered uh, equipment yes. like that, like a chainsaw. Yes, you got to prime that shit. You, know? you can't just. You can't just. Start, it can't just have a cold Boom start on. off a cold start, yo. Like you got to prime the. You got to prime that bitch eight times. Right, then you gotta fucking yank the shit, and if you're lucky, right, if you're lucky, it'll come off on the first. It'll it'll start on the first yank after you prime the bitch. But nah, yo, he ain't do none of that. He was maybe just like, boom, right? Like maybe nah. it's an maybe it's an electric <laughs> chainsaw, and everyone knows those are really powerful. Um, <laughs> but my, really but my question is, why is it gassed up sitting on the shelf? <laughs> In fucking Walmart. <laughs> like, what's going on? You never, you never know. You never know. <laughs> what's going on? You never know when a special forces commando takes ownership of her father's bar and then he dies and then she comes looking for revenge. I don't I don't know. I, I don't know. There is that. What why why, why does it? this movie exist? I don't even oh, care that it exists. I care. I care. It just I care. <laughs> I'm not saying okay. it, I'm not saying it Fight shouldn't me. exist. That's I'm it. asking why does it exist? That I'm literally asking. Um, Netflix is really bad. If they just bought this, they're terrible at picking movies. Like they're really bad at it. I mean, you can't tell and this look, is a piece of shit. And and look, I, I, we're we're I'm throwing stones, but like. I liked Six Underground, right? Like I liked it for what it was. I've never seen it again, right? But it was, but it was, it was fun, and it was, you know, this movie looks like it takes itself a little too seriously. This movie looks like what was that movie? God, what was that movie? It was like it starred Angelina Jolie, and it was like had like she was like a firefighter or some shit. Oh, um, I saw that movie. She oh, like a, right. She was like a smoke jumper or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this, this, that this movie was like, not good. You'll be yeah, shocked to know it movie. wasn't good. Yeah, so. it wasn't. I didn't. I didn't care for that movie, man. And that's what that's what this reminds me of. So, okay, is it is it too much to say that Netflix at this point is the Chinese takeout of streaming services? They make <laughs> movies that you can devour quickly. And then you never think about them again. They're like through your system very quickly. Within 30 minutes, it's done. Like you just never think about it again. Because that's how I think about these type of movies. Like, yeah, Six Underground, that was fun. I don't ever think about it again. I, there's nothing, no stunts in that movie. I'm like, well, that was really good. I'm just like, I just don't think about it. I was entertained at the moment. And then it's gone. It's not filling. Yeah. Not for yeah. Long. Yeah. What the fuck was the name of the movie? Those Who Wish Me Dead. Was the name of that Angelina Jolie movie? Yeah, it was not. It wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't a good movie either. Right, it's nothing that I'm going to be right in the middle of just like "Eh, okay, it existed. It's nothing that I'm going to be talking about. Yeah, that's what Netflix does. Like they're not. They're like some of them are just terrible, right? But the majority of them are just kind of like all right. It's kind of this is this is on. You just put out content. They're like they're like fucking content creators at this point. They just put a bunch of bullshit out and hope something hits. That's all yeah, they that was, They just want content to put on their show, on their fucking platform. Yeah, I think this was like an HBO. I think that was an HBO Max movie. Like it got released only on HBO Max or some shit like that. Was it HBO Max? Oh yeah, it yeah. is HBO Max. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, those wish me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. What yeah, as a, wasn't yeah as a part cheap. of his plans for all of 2021 films, Warner Brothers also streamed the film simultaneously on HBO Max service for a period of one month, uh, after which it removed it until the home uh, media release. And then they put it back. Um, yeah, that was, not, that was not good. 
It was not good. But it's just one of those very mediocre movies. Like that argument that there are no more movie stars um, that you were talking about earlier when you were referring to Zendaya. Um, I think it's movies like this that kind of ruin that. Like the the argument is it's like the big Marvel movies and stuff like that that ruin it. But I think it's all of these kind of shitty middling star fucker movies that dilute people's brand. Because it's not like Angelina Jolie isn't a big name. Now, she's less of a big name now. But at a point, it was like Angelina Jolie was a fucking mega <coughs> movie star. She was in a movie. People would go see it. Tomb Raider, even Malef- Malef- Maleficent and, and all of that stuff. Like, you want, you want to try that again? Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fuck off. Um, razor cheekbones, you can call it that. Um <laughs> Like she was, she was a big, she's a big movie star, right? And I think a lot of these, like Netflix has done, I think serious damage to all these people who just want to put out these sort of quick money maker movies. Like you're doing damage to your brand. The Rock, Kevin Hart, uh, Gal Gadot, like even Ryan Reynolds, like all of those like just quick, fast movies that they make, and they're all middling. None of them are like showstoppers. It's just really weird. There was Assault Two. What? Was she in it? Why? She couldn't. Oh, no. It fell through. It fell through. Okay. Oh. I was going to say, that movie did not do well. What? (laughs) So, yeah, I I think that's actually what's – I think that's what's actually hurting a lot of these people's uh, brand. Is it – they just want to get these quick, fast movies out, and it's like you're just making garbage. Just complete garbage. Kind of like the music industry. <laughs> music industry is very similar. A lot of people just doing it just for all the money they can make real quickly. Yeah. Uh, especially in hip hop. A lot of people yeah. don't give a fuck about it. Like they, they tell you straight up, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I just want to make money. That's it. And uh, going about my business. So yeah, like a lot of industries are at this point now. They just, they don't give a fuck about the quality of the product. No. And we get a bunch of garbage. So and then every but we still get a lot of good like, shit. We do still get a lot of good, good stuff, but like again, like you got to kind of look for it. Yeah, I, like there's look, a bunch of stuff that people just don't watch that is really, really good. But yeah, I, I'm starting. I'm starting to think that like this. I mean, I, I've thought this for a while now, but all of these sort of vanity projects are really doing damage to these people as a, as their brands, like. I think it is. I think it is severely hurting a lot of these actors who think that oh, people really want to see it. People don't want to see all this bullshit just because you in it. Like they just don't. It's, it's not enough. Like I heard. I haven't watched it yet, but I heard Ripley on Netflix is excellent. Right? Like it doesn't. It's not just a you know an actor who's just like hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. You know, it's just actually making movies that people want to see, or in that case, a series that people want to see. So we'll see. I mean, yeah, it's um, it's a reboot of um, what was it Matt Damon did a version of um, oh, the talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah, yeah, it's a reboot of that. Okay. So, um. But yeah, I think that I think it really matters when you're doing a bunch of these kind of things. Like I know, I person I know we all didn't really like it, but I think like the Gray Man is another perfect example of that. Like it had some fun ish action, but that's kind of a star fucker movie for Ryan Gosling. Yeah, I kind of, I've, yeah, I, f- I forgot. I was like, what the fuck is the Gray Man? And then, exactly, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The two dudes who directed Endgame and Ryan Gosling, one of the biggest movie stars in the world, and you're like, what was that movie again that came out? Just hey, you know who else was in that movie? You know who else was in that yeah, movie? Yeah, Captain America was in that fucking movie. Yeah, fucking Chris <laughs> Evans was in that movie. He's been in some garbage on Netflix, too. Yes, he has. That was, another, was that other movie he did that wasn't that great? He did The one on Apple that TV that where he was, was like... Was it Apple TV? Oh, no, yeah. He's Ghost. like a boyfriend of a... Uh, yeah, Ghosted, right. Ghosted, yeah, that shit sucked. <laughs> like... But it's all right. it's all you of these. Work. Come on. Like you, you're better than this, Chris. You're better than this. Come on now. Um, but I do think there's just there's so much of these sort of um, star fucker movies, and it, it's just getting ridiculous. Like you guys are better than this. This shit is yeah. stupid. But then you, you before like, we go, um, yeah. Go ahead. Oh. No, no, that's it. Go ahead. Um, 
Uh, you finished the baby reindeer. Both of you just finished baby reindeer. Yes. We didn't talk about it. Um, look, spoilers for Baby Reindeer. It's been out for a while now. Um, if that, like, I think you said this, Terrence, or, or Micah said this, um, that woman deserves all the Emmys. All of them. <laughs> all of them, you know? Like, yeah. she's so goddamn good. It's amazing. It's an amazing performance. Um, yeah. It's really good. If you haven't watched Baby Reindeer, don't, like, go in blind. Like, just stop this. And just go in blind. Don't let anybody tell you about it. Just watch it. You will be pulled in quite literally within the first five minutes. And it doesn't slow down <laughs> until the very end. It really doesn't. But, yeah, again, every three to six months, <coughs> Netflix comes up with some sort of documentary that, gets, that hits the zeitgeist and everybody's talking about it. That's, that's their bread and butter at this point to me. Not, not all these other movies that they do. Well, you know, this is technically a, a, a dramatized thriller, uh, not a uh, not a documentary. But if you've seen um, the person that this is allegedly based on, <laughs> yes, I could allegedly, see why you would, allegedly, right? I I could see why you would say it's a documentary because uh, <laughs> Jesus, Christ, Jessica Gunning, uh, Jessica Gunning nailed it. Um, and yeah, man, like. Um, what was it? Episode, uh, four. Was it yeah. episode four? Yeah, man. Like yeah, I was a background real, story. Yeah. I was real uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> fucking should have been. Just, Jesus Christ. Oof, Jesus, man. Um, and then like, and then coupled with the fact that like, this is based on a true story and this is the guy that it happened to. Um, yeah, he's like basically reliving his fucking trauma, too. <laughs> like, yeah, Richard, yeah. That's Richard a little Gale. weird, man. Um, in episode four, when you find out why he is the way he is, um, and then he the uh, question he's, he's got his issues with his sexuality, and then episode six, where he just lays it all out on stage. <laughs> like, I was like, Jesus Christ. Christ, is that man. part real to the story, by the way? Do you know? I don't know. I, I I, mean, I, I, I want to I want to find I want to see if there's if that video is still available somewhere because I'd love to watch a real video of that. I'm not sure. Uh, I, yeah, I, I didn't even I didn't even check uh, check to see. Uh, uh, but that scene was great. I think it is real. Maybe because he he turned this into like a basically like a monologue. He yeah. he, he yeah, took he the story into and turned the, it into a stage. Uh, it turned it into the bottom. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> and that and then and they made a show out of it. Um no, this was really good. Like I was I went in I just everybody was like, hey, this is a very good show. And I didn't know what it was about. I went in blind and was kind of just sucked again, sucked in within the first ten minutes. And I ran through it and I think I almost did it in the, in the same day. Ran through the whole thing. It's only seven episodes. Um they're thirty minutes a piece. And it's insane. Like it's the most comfortable, uncomfortable thing I've seen this year. This is the most uncomfortable scene I've seen in a long time, honestly. Uh, and I've yeah. seen a lot of horror movies that are pretty fucked up, <laughs> but this was, this was like part horror, like just drama, horror, thriller, whatever the fuck. It, basically, everything just rolled into one. This chick was crazy. Um, and yeah, buddy. Oof. The woman that is based off of, she came forward. She she outed herself. He didn't. It's not based um, on her. It's not. <laughs> yeah, allegedly, the person that is allegedly, allegedly based off of. Um, yeah, she did an interview that you can find uh, on Pierce Morgan. And she basically, she, she kind of just like, yeah, she proved his point. She proved yeah. that, like, no, nah, this is actually me. She tried to she tried to say it wasn't, but by her action, she proved that it is 100% her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You I'm going to see that fucker. Like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> it's like, take it easy. I love um, it. She's like, Pierce, you're only one year older than me. Pierce Morgan was like, excuse me? How do you know any of my personal business? Like, he started freaking out. Like, you know, me? You know looked it up. Like, what the fuck? You looked it up? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I did my research. <laughs> A lot of it. A lot of it. Like, whoa. Calm down. <laughs> he saw his life flash right before his fucking eyes. He was like, oh, <laughs> shit. I've got your mobile text as we speak from her iPhone. 
P-H-O-E-N. Like, again, those little things, like, she was spelling shit wrong. Like, nah, yo, he ain't just make this shit up. Yeah, that doesn't yo, make any sense. That, to just make that stuff was too deliberate. That, right. Right. That's too deliberate, man. Uh, again, like, you, wa- you watch that woman on... I mean, you watch that woman on Pierce Morgan, and then you watch the show, you're like, you know, this performance is identical to how she talks. All of her oh, mannerisms. I've never seen I'm, it. Well, it's All so funny. Right. She's like, I'm I'm from this part of of Ireland. Like, this character's from a different part of Ireland. I'm like, lady, nobody knows the difference of what the fuck you're Scotland. talking about. Scotland. Scotland. Oh, Scotland, excuse but, me. Yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's all over there. Um, but, yeah, was, she was like, no, it's totally different. It's like, okay. <laughs> this right. is She vanilla iced them. It's like ding ding. It's like, okay, all right. Not the same. It's, the same. it's not the same. It's, it's nothing. It's yeah. and, and nothing. Nothing is better than watching Pierce Morgan, a a uh, a massive blowhard who can never not interrupt his guest. Actually, go. Oh, I'm just gonna let this woman talk. <laughs> like you know what? You got it. <laughs> he just set the fuck back. I was right. like. Oh, he he understood exactly what the fuck was going on. He's like, I don't need to say shit. <laughs> this woman is out of her mind. Great. No, she needs like therapy or some kind Absolutely. of Absolutely. She was wild. Yeah. <clears throat> so yes, check out Bri- Baby Reindeer. Um this is uh this was top tier Netflix dramatized documentary or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um they should do you, more uh, of them. They should do more of them. It's great. You know what's not top tier? Uh, sugar. Uh, we finished that. <laughs> real quick. Finished. And I will. I will. I will end it because because she wanted to see it. My wife really wanted to. Fly. All right, let's see where this goes. Right, like because this is dumb. Let's see where this goes. Maybe it was a dream uh, sequence. <laughs> and uh, and at the end of it, uh, this is her quote. This is her back of the box quote. Well, that sucked. <laughs> 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 well, I don't have any desire to see that. Thank you very much. Have you watched any of Dark great. Matter, by the way? Fucking mad. No, we're starting it uh, this weekend. All right, cool. Uh, I'm I'm doing the same. So, all right, all she right. She was pissed. She was yeah. fucking pissed. Yeah, he's the color of that milk that Luke Skywalker was drinking in that last movie. Get the fuck out of here. Um, no thanks. All right, that is it for us. We will be back next week with another episode. Later, guys. Yeah. Thank you.